Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Someone who never worries about his weight, Neil Kulak. Sir, welcome. Never, not at all, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, my friend. So let's get to uh, Najee Harris. Uh, at the moment, uh, probably a couple happy meals shy of uh, getting to 250. Uh, what about the, I mean, he's 244, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't realize he was 6'2". I thought he was a little shorter than that. What is your reaction? I know it's only June, but what's your reaction to that? Um, it, it, He's big. We knew he was big. Um, he just doesn't quite get the, the accolades for being that big. Um, he really is a power guy. He's got good feet. He can make guys miss, but he's a between the tackles uh, type of, of chain moving running back. And that's probably the weight um, I, I would think that they'd want him to be at because uh, he looks like he carries that very well. I mean, it, it's if you see him up close, you can tell he's that big um, when you see him. Uh, on TV and you know that running backs just simply aren't that big anymore. You think he's like five ten to 20, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, he's really big and uh, he doesn't have the breakaway speed uh, to make him much of a, a difference maker, but I don't think, I don't think him cutting weight is a good thing either. I, he, I think he's pretty lean. Um, and with that, he's going to have all the agility uh, he's going to get. It's not going to be a, a you know his weight is not going to hold him back. I think he's naturally um, around that weight, and if that's plus or minus a, a couple pounds, which you know that's going to, at his age it's going to fluctuate day to day anyway. Uh, he's at his game weight. He's at where he should be with it, and it, he looks good. He looks conditioned. Okay. That, that's right. probably more important overall. Because I thought he was like two thirty last season. Was he? I think he was listed at two thirty-two. He said he told the media he was like two forty-four last year. Or something oh, okay. Like that. All right. Hey, that's in a, and here, you get into ten pounds at that height. Uh, it's tough to to see exactly where that's going to go. But he's uh, he's a big kid. Uh, I have very few criticisms of him. I think he's a good pass receiver, good blocker. He's a good running back. He's not a great running back, but he's good. He's a good running back. Uh, but at Alabama. At full speed, you start breaking tackles when you're in the second level, which is what he did repeatedly. With the Steelers, there was a crowd in the backfield. He didn't break tackles. Uh, is is it the hope on his part that, that doing it this way will help him break tackles? <laughs> That's an excellent question. I'm, uh, I'm towing the line carefully here. I, I have said about Najee Harris almost word for word exactly the way you introduced him. I think he's a good running back. I don't think he's a great one. I don't think he's going to be a great one. Mm-hmm. Um, he Statistically, he, he forced a lot of missed tackles last year. If you marry the film to the statistics, you can see that he made those out of desperation a lot of the times. He wasn't making them at the second level, like, like you mentioned he, he did at Alabama. Um, he also did not break a whole lot of plays at Alabama. Now, for me, um, if my running back isn't breaking long plays in college, probably not going to do it in the NFL very often. Right. Yeah, he, exactly. Good probably agree. pretty safe to say that. And I, I don't think we saw Najee do that now. Everyone's going to yell, what about this play? What about that play? All right, well, when you get the ball 400 times a year and you break five plays, you're not breaking plays. Right. Okay, that, that's, that's not what that means. Um, I don't think he's able to do that. I, it, it's not, he's not that kind of athlete, but that's probably, again, why they're having him carry 240-plus pounds. Um, they want him to, to get yards after contact. Uh, making guys miss would be great, and certainly he, he has the ability, and if this was what I think the Steelers lacked in 2020, they would have been a, a much different team if they were able to do this in 2020, uh, excuse 2019, which is what led them to draft Najee Harris in the first place. He can make zero yards into three. He can make one yard into four or five. That's a big difference when you're driving down the field. Uh, over the course of the season, though, that adds up. and It, it, it costs a lot to get short games. Mm-hmm. You should probably find ways, a multitude of ways, to convert third and short as opposed to lining up in 12 and, and running the ball between you know your A or B gap. Um, Harris is going to get you that. 
but the frequency in which he's getting it is a concern uh, for his long-term viability. But I also might argue that you're drafting 20th overall. You have the worst running back room in the NFL. That, that's not even an argument. Drafting a running back in order to pick up these specialty downs at 20 overall uh, or 22 overall, where did Harris go? 22? Uh, I forget. Yeah, I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around there. You're the back half, back third of, of the, the first round. Should you take the, the four or five all pro players who are there readily available every year mm. or take the guy that, that has an immediate need uh, for your team and a guy that can step on the field and play right away. I get the value of that. And with that too, I might even say um, four years cheap, fifth year on a, a fifth year option for one of the, the least valuable positions in the game in terms of dollars. And then maybe even a tag. That all told is probably what six years for twenty five, twenty six million dollars, something like that. Yeah. Is that if you let him walk after that? If he has six seasons, is that a bad investment for for twenty two overall? I don't think so. Right? right? It, it, he might, his career yeah. might be over by that point. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, but you're going to get a lot of work out of him, and I think that's kind of their plan. I don't think they look at at you know the the cliche way that everyone wants to say it. When you draft a guy, you need to, you know, get a guy that's going to be with you for 13 years. I don't know how in the world you could possibly think that that's a, a consistent thing. I mean, it's just way too many injuries. It's way too rough of a game to count on anybody except for maybe, maybe a quarterback yeah. lasting that long in, in today's NFL. And that's mostly because quarterbacks barely get hit anymore. Anybody else, though, they're going to hit plenty. If you draft a running back, is it an in, re, unreasonable? to think six years, maybe we get two all-pro years out of him. With Najee Harris, maybe we get 2,000 yards from scrimmage once or twice. Over six seasons for $26 million, which is barely uh, it, it, between four or five million a season, is that a bad investment? I don't think that it is. So I, I, I see the value of it. But at the same time, for me, it's about the, the, the usage, the frequency of it. If you're running the ball 400 times with one guy, there, there's a lot of things wrong with your offense. If that, that's just the way it is nowadays. You can't go on multiple 15-plus play drives scoring points on them and win games anymore. You just can't. Your opponent has players, has the ability, and has the desire to stretch you vertically, and they're going to get big plays and big points on you. So if you think you can score 31 points playing that style of football, mm -hmm. okay, you're going to run that team straight off the field if you do, uh, but you're going to need to do that 11, 12 times if you want to get a home game in the playoffs. So for me, it, it's a strategy that relies too much on defense, and it, it's not a defensive game anymore. Right. It's not about Najee Harris necessarily, a player that I think is good, not great. Mm -hmm. He's not a game-breaking player, though, and I, I hope the Steelers found a few of those in, in this draft in this free agency period and improved their offensive line. Maybe that gives them the ability to not need to hand the ball off to a 3.8 yard a, a carry running back, but it, we'll we'll see how they play it. Yeah, and again, when we're saying he's good and not great, we're not insulting him. It's it's fine to be a good NFL running back, it's just he's not he's not one of the top five guys, uh, at least yet. We'll see. The quarterback situation: they acquired Trubisky. They drive to Kenny Pickett. Where does Mason Rudolph fit in all this? Um, he's going to fit in a lot better on a, one of a number of teams in the NFL. I, I don't think there's a way in the world they, they have any desire um, to, to keep Mason Rudolph. And some of that is like they, they want to go in a different direction. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's just what they want to do. Um, Rudolph can't possibly say he didn't get a chance. Um, he, he's had multiple opportunities. And I'm not saying that he didn't avail himself reasonably well in, in, in some of those instances. Um, he's got a lot of bad film, too. And for me, I, I remember distinctly talking about this after the game last year. The, the game against the Lions, he was not good. That was not a, a good performance from him at all, uh, considering the situation that he was in. And I understand that it might have been, you aren't sure, he didn't get to fully prepare, he might not have been used to it. But, it, like, look, you're not going to get a perfect opportunity this is the offense that they were going to have uh, the next season that Rudolph, you know, if Ben is out of the way, Rudolph gets the opportunity to start. 
it's not, it would not have been much different anyway. And I don't think that it is. That it is. He had the chance to step up and, and make his case. And to be honest, I don't think he played particularly well. I'm not surprised with the moves that they made um, as, as far as bringing in the free agents, um, and, as well as, keep in mind, they tendered uh, Dwayne Haskins, and then they drafted Kenny Pickett. So they, they made three transactional moves, none of which support the idea that they really wanted Mason Rudolph on the team. Um, you can make the, the case that you know what they really wanted to do then was draft a rookie, bring in the probable starter from free agency, and let Haskins and Rudolph battle it out uh, or figure out which one you could trade. That might have been the case for them, but it, now being where, the, where they are, um, Pickett falls to them, and to be honest, not making a comment on, on Pickett's ability or anything of that sort, I don't think there were many circumstances in which they – honestly thought Pickett would fall 20. I, I really don't think that was the case. So I, I don't think they planned on that. They would have liked to have taken a quarterback if there was one that they liked available at 20, and there happened to be one. I don't think they banked on that, though. Uh, all of that said, um, Rudolph is a veteran. He's got one year left in his contract. An injury is going to pop up somewhere. Right. I, I, out of respect, I think they'll trade him. Yeah. Just because like, in long term, he's not here. Um, Trubisky is more or less on a one-year contract, and he has a, a longer contract than Rudolph does. There's no way Rudolph is back on the team next year. So you trade him somewhere where he might get an opportunity to get an extension and, and, and stay in the league. Do right by the guy. Um, he gave you his best effort. You didn't pay him a whole lot of money anyway, um, and, and you, you gave him a shot. Probably didn't work out the way that you wanted it to, but you know he didn't do anything wrong by you. So I think they'll, they'll find a, a, a spot for him to go. If it's a, a you know a, a 2024 draft pick in exchange, fine. You know it, that's probably what it'll end up being. Somebody will need a, a backup, maybe a fringe level starter in a guy like Rudolph, and Rudolph probably stays in the league for another couple of years just because of the experience that he has. So um, it, it's time to move on for for both sides. I think I, I'd imagine um, they'll they'll give him a chance to kind of see how things go in training camp, make sure there isn't an injury. That's really what he's there now for. Uh, insurance more than anything else, but I, I would suspect uh, injuries aside, I would suspect they're going to trade him. All right, now let's get to the the one we don't want to talk about, but at least let's take it from a from a league and a and a Browns point of view, and that's the Watson situation. It's now up to twenty four accusers. Uh, again, he was not indicted by a grand jury. These are all civil lawsuits, but they're all civil lawsuits that contain details. Many of them seem to be relatively similar. All right, so that establishes that. The Browns traded for this guy. The Browns gave him a huge contract. They gave him also a parachute year because he would only get a million if he suspended this year. They have not released Baker Mayfield. He's still there. Uh, how does the league need to look at this situation, and who in the heck is in charge of vetting in the Cleveland Browns organization? Uh, it's it, the word that I would use to describe this, just from a, a, an administrative perspective, is unprecedented. They're really this, nothing even close to this has happened in NFL history. Well, the two words I would use. One I can't use, and the second one is show. Right, exactly. It's, it's, I, I can't use the first one, but people know what it means. If, if we, I, I understand, and I, I mean nothing by this, but if we are to look at this strictly through the lens of business, ignore everything else. Now, we'll, we'll get into the, the, the ethics of doing that, but if we are looking just at uh, the value of it, what Cleveland paid him and what they gave up for him are market level. That's not unexpected. Yeah. Um, whatever the final number rested on, I wasn't going to be surprised, but it was going to be fully guaranteed. It was going to be well over two million or uh, two hundred million, and they were going to give up three first round draft picks. That's what that the the price is. You, Russell Wilson more or less got the same thing, and Russell Wilson's eight years older. So it, it's that part of it aside. They paid market value for somebody that it, it appears to be drawing in an entire subway car full of, of accusers 
of all the same thing. Now, I just read Albert Breer, Breer of, of Sports Illustrated said the league was surprised with the, the 24th accuser that just came up. Surprised by what? There's right. 23 people that accused him of this. You think one more is the surprise? It, there, it, 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 there isn't a right turn for anybody in this. The whole thing is a uh, one word I can't say show it. it yes. How they got to this point though, is driven solely by the idea that the fact that to win consistently in the NFL, you need a good quarterback yeah. and there's one available for the Browns to take. And I I'm, I'm certain I'll walk that back later. I would think it would be certain the Browns had a lot of trepida- trepidation about it. But what it comes down to is the price is the price. You can't haggle over the price. That is the market price for right. a quarterback That's of right. Watson's ability. Yes. Do you want this guy in your locker room? That would be my problem. And I'm, I'm not trying to stand on a pulpit, but right. more of my issue is what comes with this. It's not the fact that this is what you pay a quarterback of his ability. That's a, that's a foregone conclusion. To bring him in knowing there is just simply no way you could think you're going to, to – the price is going to be that astronomically high. That big of a deal is about to go down in the NFL, and no one else is going to say anything. Is there anyone else who's going to come forward? No. I'm not going to believe that from anybody because, mm-hmm. frankly, you don't know who's going to come forward. Somebody else is going to come forward at some point. Yeah. Do you want to be the guy who's now paying him to do that? That would have been my thought. I, I don't yeah. know why. No, it, I don't know why the Cleveland Browns feel Deshaun Watson is somehow synonymous with championship because clearly he's not in the NFL. Right. There have been over 50 teams who have won Super Bowls without Deshaun Watson on their roster. It is possible to do that. Um, the Cleveland Browns also have a very good football team. Now, I, I don't necessarily think that Baker Mayfield is the, the, the best quarterback in the NFL. I know that they had to pay him a lot of money. It seems like he gets hurt a lot. And just from my observations, objectively speaking, it seems like he's pretty bad when he's hurt. I mean, we, we've seen yeah. that team completely fall apart. Uh, when they lost the running back last season and Mayfield was hurt. Yeah. He tried to play through it. I thought that was a mistake at the time. I still think it's a mistake. I think we're in this situation because of that. Yeah. Mayfield Agreed. could win the game. And if you're looking at a one-year type of deal before you want to go find another quarterback, I really think you could have done better than Deshaun Watson yeah. at that price to take on uh, the baggage that is Deshaun Watson. There's just way too much there. And that that's not me making a stance of, of uh, guilty or not guilty. It's just very simply, I don't want the circus that's going to come with this. Something happened. I I don't feel like this guy is in, in my best business let, interest to be around. Let, let me just in a, in one final point from a common sense point of view. We all know that most of most athletes now are surrounded by quote teams. Right, they have a team of people yep. around them. Okay, <laughs> exactly right. All right, and part of that team of people, for some of them, happens to be, right, you know, a massage therapist who quote knows them. Hey, you know that pain yep. I've got, that pain I have on the left side. In other words, they know you so well that when you're describing to them what the issue is, yep, they've got a, a good handle on it. And 20, that's exactly why okay. they want one person okay. doing it. Yes. Exactly. 24 is a big number. All right. Uh, so <laughs> that, that, That's just sitting in this chair. All right. <laughs> I think Even I'm... worse. I mean, you, you ask any uh, high-level pro athlete. I, I know this because I, I had a conversation with James Conner about this um, it, between his, his rookie and his second year. He said, I didn't ask him directly what he spent his money on, but he had mentioned uh, he got a nutritionist, he yep. got a chef, Yep. And he put a lot of money into equipment. Yep. And I just to get the answer, I asked him why. He said, I'm investing in my body. Yes. That makes sense. You're a professional athlete. You need that. You yes. need, you know, that, that's 24-7, 365. Another issue I don't think gets considered enough with Watson, from the perspective of the other guys in the locker room, they know you don't have 24 massage therapy. Exactly. That's so, right whatever about not guilty or guilty 
they know that you don't have that to them more than anybody else. And they're not going to say it, but to them more than anybody else, they know how weird that is. And it, it, it's yep. really, I, I can't say this. It, I'm, I'm trying not to get myself in trouble, but no, you, you, I can't say this any more clearly than this. That is very atypical for an athlete of Watson's stature and financial means. That is really not normal at all. For quarterbacks especially, yep. they are hyper control freaks. Yep. They keep their circles very, very small and very tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, so what have, Watson is accused yeah. of would be the opposite direction yes. of people who are doing that the way that other people do. Uh, that in and of itself, to, to say nothing of you know the, the, the victim stories themselves and, right. and how undermining that might be. But that in itself just suggests that this guy is just plain and simple not making a lot. Of, he's out making a lot of bad decisions. Yeah. Do you want to invest in this guy? To this level, no. I, I I don't know. No. Again, I'm I'm not running the Browns, and I know that it makes no difference to the GM if he gets fired because this doesn't work out. No. But I'm just no. saying that that's a that's a lot. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to have everybody understand that from a common sense point of view, right? And then I think that's how we we attack this part of it. Uh, Neil, a pleasure as always. Thanks so much. You are appreciated more than you know. Definitely. Thanks for having me, guys.